I'm John Carter in Moscow, in Havana, Cuba. Now in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. I'm John Carter in Petra, right here in communist China, reporting from India. Hi, I'm John Carter in the Solomon Islands. I'm John Carter in Soweto, from El Salvador. I'm John Carter in Sydney, Australia. The coming dictatorship. Are you a marked man? Welcome to the Carter Report. Here's John Carter. Welcome back, my friend. We're talking about are you a marked man? The coming world boycott and the coming world dictatorship. We're talking today in this section of the program, part two, we're talking about the image of the beast. The first beast is the great church of the dark ages. We're going to have a text here. Revelation chapter 17, and I'm going to read it to you. Revelation chapter 17 and verses 3 and onwards. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman, that's the church, sitting on a scarlet beast which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of a fornication. This was the church of the Dark Ages. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled uh, with great uh, amazement. This is what the great American preachers used to preach. This woman here is the picture of the church of the dark ages that had her hands crimson with the blood of the saints. She is a union. The woman, the church, the beast is the state. She is a union. Behold, of church and state, which is the very antithesis, the very antithesis of the gospel of Christ, but the very essence of antichrist. Now, I've got a statement here from the great historian. I don't know if I've got time to read it, but I'm going to try to. Uh, now, let me show you this. Here you got the Pontifex Maximus. There you got Caesar, divine, Caesar Augustus. Notice what he's called. Just have a look at this, my friend. He is called Pontifex Maximus. That's the same title of the Pope. Over here, you've got the name of the Pope and you've got his title. It is Pontifex Maximus. The title of the pagan Roman emperor was Pontifex Maximus. It became the title of the Church of Rome. Now, Newman spoke about this, the great church historian. He spoke about this. And from these readings and from history, we have uh, deducted the infallible truth that the church not only conquered Rome, but Rome conquered the church. And that became uh, the great apostasy or the Antichrist or the church of the dark ages. Are you listening to me, my friends? This is the church that carried out the persecution of dissidents. This was the church of the bloody Inquisition. But the pagans actually won. The church accommodated the teachings of the pagans. Just look at this. They had the day of the sun, Sunday. They had the worship of the Virgin Queen of Heaven. They had salvation by works. They had Pontifex Maximus. They had an army of priests. They got it all from the dragon. They got it all from the dragon. They got it all, my friend, from the Roman Empire. You say, this is speculation. No, 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 my friend. This is the truth. This is history. This is God's own truth. This is not my opinion. They had an army of priests. They had the veneration of dead saints. They had prayers for the dead. You don't read about these things in the Holy Scriptures. They had the relics, the veneration of the relics of dead people. They had church joined to state. You had the persecution of 
heretics, the immortality of the soul, images and idols, prayers to the dead saints, and much, much more. And so many people went along with this because nobody wanted to step out of line. They became uh, just a race of conformists. And so the image of the beast will be a copy of this antichrist system. The image of the beast, let me get this into your heads today, the image of the beast will be a copy of church and state and persecuting the true saints of God. That's what the image of the beast is. I've got a statement here from a great and profound commentator. Alan White wrote in 1910, when the Protestant churches shall unite with the secular power to sustain a false religion for opposing which their ancestors endured the fiercest persecution, when the state shall use its power to enforce the decrees and sustain the institutions of the church, then will Protestant America have formed an image to the papacy And there will be national apostasy, which will end only in national ruin, said the great American prophetic commentator, Alan White. Let me ask the searching, pertinent, powerful question, which certainly is politically incorrect. Are you able to bear it, my friend? Are you saying, I can't, I... I, I I just don't want to hear this. My friend, this is the truth that is going to judge you in the last days. It is the truth that will save your souls, if you will listen. I ask the question, could this happen soon? Church and state joined together in the United States of America. Could we have a theocracy and a time of persecution? Could we face this our biggest test? Could our government be part of this? Could we become so involved in nationalism and party politics that we could become participants in the last great work of Satan? Now, here it is, from my heart, based on the Word of God. You may say, I don't like it, but that's not my problem. That's yours. You and I need to seek God and seek the truth. The final deception will not come from atheism. It'll come from the lamb that speaks as a dragon. It'll come from the church. It'll not come from the far left with his anti-Christian agenda, which I oppose. But it comes from the lamb that speaks as a dragon. It comes from counterfeit Christianity. It comes from the false prophet. Anybody listening? It may well be an aggressive reaction to the dangerous liberal anti-Christian ideas of the radical left. Now I know I'm being completely politically incorrect, but I say to you, I don't care because it is the truth. Let me give you some examples of the radical left agenda. Let me tell you how the radical left is destroying America that arose as a nation founded on Christian truths. Now, let me make it very plain. We love homosexuals. We love gays. We love people of all different types of religion and different sexualities because there seems to be many today. But we see in America, we have seen in America, uh, the bringing in of same-sex marriage, a revolution. You may agree with it, my friend. And we see the war upon the traditional American family. Who would have believed it? If I'd said these things 50 years ago, you would have run me out of town. The Clintons fought to establish DOMA. Do you remember this? The Defense of Marriage Act. One man, one woman. That's what the Clintons did. It would have been impossible to get elected to the White House, Congress or Senate while promoting same-sex marriage. An anathema couldn't have been done. 
But how quickly things changed. The Supreme Court entered the realm of religion and I would say making a tremendous blunder, as Justice Roberts said. And the Supreme Court overturned thousands of years of civilization. We are seeing a war today against the Bible and against Christ and against the home and against Christians. Let me talk about freedom of speech. The radical left doesn't believe in freedom of speech. On university, uh, university campuses in America, conservatives are shouted down. No freedom of speech for Christians who believe the Bible. Think of the Christian baker in Colorado who was persecuted for his faith. Where was the tolerance? The radical left believes in freedom of speech for themselves and the promotion of every sexual practice. Men becoming women, women becoming men. And the Clintons passed DOMA, the Defense of Marriage Act. What went wrong in 20 years? Well, I guess votes had something to do with it. What did Jesus say? Genesis 1 and 2, it talks about the creation of men and women and the home. Notice what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 19 and verses 4 and 5. And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. I'm here to tell you something. I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus. I believe in the Bible. I believe in America. I believe in freedom of speech. I believe that you've got the right to express your opinion and I've got the right to preach the truth as Jesus taught it. I believe in freedom. I think of state schools and the indoctrination of little boys and girls, the great intolerance, we will silence you, we will destroy you if you dare say a word against us. That's the liberal left, the far left. It is a war against Christianity, especially fought by the liberal media in America. And we have today sometimes the destruction of Christian symbols, Jesus, Mary, the desecration of places of worship, the burning of churches by God-haters. What would the Pilgrim Fathers say? They would be aghast. Washington said, it's impossible to govern a nation without God and the Bible. What do people say about that? I've even heard people tell me uh, the founding fathers were atheists. I mean, what ignorance. We have today the repudiation of the work ethic and the glorification of communism. I've seen enough of communism to last for eternity. When I was in Russia, when I went there, when communism was ruling, I saw the empty shelves and I saw people starving. That's what communism does. What's wrong with people? Don't they remember anything? Are they brain dead? I remember once I bought a a truckload of fish because the people were starving. I bought all this fish and I gave it to them. That's what communism does. It starves people to death. I believe in the good old biblical work ethic. Now, it could well be, listen to me, the lamb that speaks is a dragon in the last days may well be a reaction to the radical agenda of the radical far left. But now here's something which will sober you up, but the reaction may be even worse. (gasps) Nothing could be worse. Well, the Bible says it could be. I want you to look at history. You know, bear with me, please. I want to say this to you. Those who forget the past are condemned to repeat its errors. I'm amazed today in America at the ignorance of people concerning history. Some people tried to tell me the other day that Hitler was a communist. Goodness me. (laughs) 
He hated communism. He was a dictator, but he hated communism. Now, let me just tell you why Hitler won over the masses. Well, there was injustice. You know, people all the time today are talking about injustice, injustice, injustice. Well, the British, the French and the Americans treated the Germans after the First World War rather unjustly. So the Germans were talking, uh, we're not being treated properly, injustice, injustice, injustice. And it was true. Then there came the collapse of the German economy. The Deutschmark collapsed. In the morning, if you wanted to buy a loaf of bread, you took along a wheelbarrow of Deutschmarks. But if you wanted to buy a loaf of bread in the evening, you had to get a truckload. And if you went out for dinner and if you got there at 7 o'clock, you, you prolonged the meal for as long as you could because the currency was collapsing. Because if you waited a couple of, of hours, you'd get your meal for, say, 25%. So you had a collapsing economy uh, that always gets the attention of the masses. And this brought about the rise of the rabid left in Germany, the communists. And Marxism, of course, communism originated with a German, Karl Marx, came from Germany. And then Hitler came on the scene and he was saying to the people, we're going to make... Germany, great again. We've been beaten up by the Allies, but we're going to get on top and we're going to rule the world. Now, let me tell you something. There's nothing wrong in trying to make your nation great again. That's good. But when it becomes a dictatorship, that's bad. Now, Hitler was popular because he was standing out against, now listen to me, he was standing out against the war on traditional German Christian values. Are you listening to me? The German people saw their values being eroded and the church knocked down and Hitler came out and he said, I'll be your champion. (laughs) Is there anything new under the sun? He became they're Constantine. And the German people said, thank God. Hitler was against the radical socialistic left. He hated communism. Now, I'm going to tell you something that a lot of people don't, don't teach anymore and they deny it because it's politically incorrect, but it is, it is the truth and history will support me. Hitler had the support of the Pope. The Pope thought Hitler was a great, great blessing to the world because he was getting rid of the communists and the liberals. And so Hitler had the support of the Pope. There's a book called Hitler's Pope. You ought to read it. He had the support of the Roman Catholic Church. He had the support of virtually all of the Lutherans and all of the Protestants in Germany. Now, even the King of England, uh, who abdicated over the uh, Wallace uh, Simpson scandal, he was a supporter of uh, Hitler. And when he went over to Germany after his abdication, he gave the Sieg Heil. I'm glad they got rid of that king. But many of the British people at the start thought Hitler was a blessing to the world. 95% of the Germans loved Hitler and supported his agenda. He was seen as the saviour of the church and the German home. So, are you still with me? Are you following me? Is this too strong? So the radical right is a reaction usually to the radical left. So it was in Germany, so it has been around the world, so it will be in America. The lamb that speaks as a dragon could easily be a Christian reaction to the left-wing socialists 
with their perverse sexual revolution. And we've got all of the symptoms here in the United States of America. We have the war against the church, the war against the Bible, the war against marriage. One man, one woman. I tell you, my friend, it is time, uh, it is time uh, for the Lamb to come. But the Lamb that comes in Revelation 13 speaks as a dragon because it is counterfeit Christianity. I want you to get this. This lamb that comes, this pseudo-Christian power that arises in the last days, that identifies with Christ, this is pseudo-Christianity. This is the image to the beast. This is the power, my friend, uh, that arises as a reaction uh, against uh, the left with all its heresies. I want you to notice now what's going to happen next. Revelation 13 and verse 15 and onwards. Hey, this is tough stuff. Revelation 13, 15 and onwards, this is talking about church and state joined together. And he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast. That's the copy of the church of the dark ages, church and state. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. So church and state come to, many people say that'd be the greatest thing if church and state got together in America. Uh, listen to me, when church and state unite in America, we will have the very embodiment uh, of Antichrist. That's what the Bible says. That's why I'm preaching these things. Cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or in their foreheads and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Are you listening to me? The Bible says that in the last days, uh, church and state are going to unite together and we are going to have... Uh, a modern dictatorship. People are going to say, hallelujah, it is the power of God. No, my friend, it will be the power of the devil. Church and state enforcing religious laws. It is starting to happen here in America. The angry religious right will join with the state repudiate the Constitution and enforce religious laws. What they can't do through the power of the Spirit of God, they will do with the sword. It will be a re rerun of the Dark Ages with a modern twist, complete with computers and cameras, and uh, dissidents will be persecuted. And finally, the left will come to the party to save their own damned souls. This is the truth. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a dissident, a Lutheran pastor. He stood out against the Nazis. He stood out against Hitler. Almost all the Lutherans, all of them, 95% or more, 99%, shouted Sieg Heil and marched in lockstep with the Fuhrer for the glory of God. Bonhoeffer said, no. In the end, they put him to death. But he'll be with Christ in paradise. I want to tell you today, we need courage, fidelity, and loyalty to Christ, and we need to break with the crowd. We need holy nonconformity. I ask you today, are you a conformist? Are you a marked man? But will you stand for Christ? Like the three Hebrews. The three Hebrews. 
Back on the plain of Dura in the days of Babylon, you know the story, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They wouldn't bow down to the image. You know the story. <sighs> Saints, heroes. Then the king got them and threw them into the blazing, burning, fiery furnace. <laughs> dissidents. You and I need to be dissidents for Christ's sake, not conformists. But Christ came down and stood with those young men and they were delivered. And history tells us the story of these young men. They would not budge. They would not bend. They would not bow. And they would not burn. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it, my friend? Are you a marked man? My message is bend not, bow not, budge not, burn not. Amen. God created his people in different cultures, countries, and in cities around the world. He made the human race. He made us one people under God. At first, when you see someone that looks and acts differently than you, you may turn away, but take your time. Look closer. You will see that we share the same dreams, the same troubles, the same world. Open your minds and hearts to one another. Love each other as he loves us. Do this for God. Honor his creation and let his love shine through each one of us. God has blessed us all. Those blessings can be passed down to our families and to the family of Christ. A monetary gift from your estate can be given to support the tremendous work of the Carter Report. Your gift delivers hope to those waiting to hear the Word of God and changes lives all over the world. Vehicles of all kinds, boats and property can be transformed to support the schools, orphanages, churches, and television programs of the Carter Report. If this is your wish, or if you have questions, please contact us. You can call the number on the screen or write to us. Thank you for making us a part of your legacy. For a copy of today's program, please contact us at P.O. Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. Or in Australia, contact us at P.O. Box 861, Terrigal, New South Wales, 2260. This program is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. We thank you for your continued support. May God richly bless you.